thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be doing a curling tutorial. I thought it would be nice to go over sectioning, the importance of products, and the way you can change the direction of your curls to get a little bit more texture. And really the look that I'm gonna kind of be doing on myself today is more slightly of a volume style. I've got fine stick straight hair. There is no bend to it whatsoever. So I typically, the first day I curl my hair, I tend to do it a little bit tighter just to create a little bit better of a hold for myself. And I am a big, like the bigger the hair, the better type of girl. So I try to create more body and I live in Florida. So usually the humidity just makes my hair go flat rather than frizzy and big. So I try to do it a little bit tighter than normal. First and foremost, I shampooed and blow dried my hair earlier today, so I'm gonna talk about the products that I put in my hair because what you put in your hair when you blow dry it is key to get the hold of the curls that you want. You need to put in products that work for each hair type. So for me, with my finer hair, my first thing that I put in my hair was Bedhead Small Talk. It's a thickifier, so it expands your cuticle a little bit to create a little bit more fullness and volume, but it does give you the versatility of being able to get some texture in there and some volume, but without like that stiffness. The second product I used was Pravana's Polish and Reunite. I love this product. It is perfect for every single hair type out there, and it's just a really good overall heat protectant. If you are frizzy, it helps fight against frizz and the humidity. If you've never used this product, use it. You won't regret it. So I put that in second as more so a heat protector and I have a little bit of damage so it helps smooth that out. Then I use Moroccan Oil Stronghold Gel to give me a little bit more hold. It'll extend my curls a little bit by the day. So I don't use a ton of this, maybe a little less than a dime size and I really just focus it on my ends and that's about it. So I put those in my hair, blow dry it, and then I get into my styling. So usually for my curling, I go ahead and break my hair usually in about four sections. I start with my first section just like from my occipital bone down and I'm just pretty basic. I use a duckbell clip, nothing fancy at all. Um, the curling iron I'm going to be using today is the T3. It's from their trio with interchangeable heads. So this is their one inch barrel curl. I'm also gonna be doing a video coming up soon of a review. I have a lot of their products that I just recently bought and I've had several clients ask me and make comments noticing them. So I'm really liking the brand so far, so tune in for that next. So I just kinda of get in there. My first section I break into like three smaller sections the around my hairline. And usually on my hairline I always go away from my face and I don't like to get the entire hair in the barrel. Sometimes in the back it just happens because it's shorter. I hold anywhere from like 10 to 20 seconds and in the back I just kind of pull it out straight. I don't do anything super fancy with it just because like I said with it shorter it's a little bit harder to do. And I'll do the other side first before the back. Pick it back up, go in, curl, hold, you really don't want to do more than 20 seconds, and even 20 seconds on some hair types is going to be way too long, um, especially if you're like a very over-processed blonde. 20 seconds is going to be way too long for you, especially depending on the heat setting you put it on. I would do more on the 10 to 12 side. I have my um, curling iron. They go up to 450 is what it says on their website. I feel like they get actually hotter. Um, so it has five different heat settings. I have it on heat setting number four. So when I get to my second section, it's like more of my occipital area and I just break it into then four smaller sections. So usually on the second section is when I'll start alternating the curls. So for all my bottom ones, I went away from my face. So what I usually do now is I start interchanging the direction. So instead of pulling it in like this and going away, I'm gonna flip around my iron and I'm just gonna put it in and then this one's it's gonna go towards my face. And then you can just twist it and pull down. So there's different ways you can let out the curl and soften it. You can either, I'll show you on this next piece, 
Again, it's on my hairline, so I'm always going away from my face. So on this piece, I'm going to show you. My last piece, I kind of twisted my iron and pulled it down. This one, I'm just going to let it out completely. So you can either do that and then use your fingers to kind of loosen it up if you want. Or you can do your iron. And depending on how long your hair is or short, the shorter your hair is, the harder it is because of the length of the rod. You can just take your iron, twist, twist, and then pull. Continue to go through your sections, remembering to alternate the direction of your barrel. You don't have to necessarily do every other piece in the opposite direction, but try to do enough to maintain movement and texture throughout the hair. And sometimes you can still finger through even if you pull and twist. So now I'm on to my third section. So this is where some people, like if you don't like a lot of body at the top, you can only do like three sections if you want total and make your third and your fourth section into one. But if you want a softer look and still do it this way, you can do it. Just use less sections or bigger pieces. I try not to use really more than a size no bigger than this. It just, I feel like my hair, it doesn't hold the curl if I go any bigger than that. You'll always want to keep in mind the state of your hair when selecting your heat and the amount of time the iron is left on each piece. I don't recommend holding the hair for over 10 seconds if your hair is severely damaged. So usually sometimes at some point I will take my comb in the back crown area and tease just a little bit for some added height. I usually always tease a little bit on my very top layer just because again the higher the hair the better that's just my opinion so if you don't want that extra body obviously don't tease but if you want a little bit I feel like it's better to do the teasing before you curl you can go in and do it after you curl I sometimes will still do it that way I'll show you what I do um, I just normally find I end up recurling that section if I tease it after I've curled the hair. And then every now and then I go in and I'll hairspray back through. Moroccan oil, their strong spray, it's my favorite. It's pretty much always a hairspray I use. Every now and then I switch it up and I'll do something else, but I always go back to that. Because I part my hair more on the side and I like a little bit more body, I will break up this section into two pieces. Otherwise I feel like it just, I don't know. I don't like the way that it lays. I feel like it looks a little uneven with the height. So I like to break it up. So that's what I mean when I say I probably do about five sections total. When I'm on my top two sections, I like to rock the barrel back and forth on each piece rather than just hold in one place. This helps to distribute enough heat to boost the hair, but not enough to set the curl at the root. And then as far as the ones directly at your front hairline, if you want it softer around your face, just take a bigger section or don't leave the iron in as long. I kind of pretty much always do them all the same because I like, like I said, the fullness and the tightness. But if you like it more smooth around your face, just do a bigger section. Remember, if you want the added volume at the top, always tease prior to curling the piece and set with a little hairspray for extra hold. If you have a cowlick in the front that likes to lay flat, you can always bring your barrel all the way to the top and over direct the hair back to add some body for a little more lift. Once you have curled the entire head, look through your hair to see if there are any curls that need to be redone. And once you have finished those, let your hair cool down before fingering through to finish the style. So once the curls have cooled. My next products that I like to use, I combine together. It's a nice way to get like the texture, 
but without like stiffness. I mix Aquage's Transforming Light Paste with a little bit of my Moroccan oil. So you just take a little bit of both. You don't want to overuse. I do about that much paste. And uh, this is the big bottle Moroccan oil. I do just like a quarter pump, quarter to a half pump. Of course, my pump isn't working. There we go. You're going to mix both together. And then I like to just flip my head over and go through and just finger through a little bit. Come back up and you'll just finger through it all. So this is when you, if you want to go back in and tease in certain areas, like in your crown, you can. I'm actually not going to. I'm not hating the way that it looks. I feel like I have enough fullness and body without it looking too overdone. I'm always a tucker, so I'm always tucking my hair. I'll go ahead and actually do a little bit of teasing in the crown. Just because I like the volume. But, you know, sometimes you can get away with the teasing and not having to recurl. It kind of just depends on how tight or how loose you're wanting them. So, I consider this a little bit more of a tighter wave curl than what I see on some people. Like, but this is just my standard go-to. I always like add more hairspray in to just give a little bit more hold. This hairspray is amazing because it, it's a strong hairspray, but it's not really strong. Like it's not stiff. And then last but certainly not least, Amika's Anti-Humidity Spray. This will be the last thing you spray everywhere, all throughout your hair. And that's just a nice final setting spray. There's no stiffness to that. There's no like greasiness, oiliness. It's literally like a product that you don't feel at all, but it really helps set it, fights you against your humidity. You can use it on wet hair and dry hair, but it will be the last thing you use before you walk out the door. So hopefully this video helps, gives you some tips, helps you get a little bit better of an idea of like how important products are. Find products that work best for your hair. I hope some of these products I mentioned are all going to be useful to you. My key ones are the Pravana Polish and Reunite Split End Mender for those fragile ends and um, the Amica Anti-Humidity Spray. If you're not going to like use any products at all on your hair, use these two products at least. You won't regret it. So... Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are doing well. Leave a comment below if you have any questions and if you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. Bye.